Jesus is the answer for the world today. Hello, family. So, um, we'll continue our conversations on uh, spiritual maturity, and today we find ourselves in Colossians chapter 3. Uh, prior to that, though, you know, it's just a recap. We've been talking about we spent a little time concerning concerned with the idea to live as Christ and to die as gain. Okay, to live as Christ. Okay, we know to die as gain, and it seems fairly simple enough that you know to be with Christ after we die is pure gain because we are with our Savior, with our Lord, with our Master. We live with Him eternally, and you know, in Revelations, talk about like you know the idea of. Where there's no more crying, there's no more sorrow, that we are in Christ and we live in the city and with him, we live, we dwell with our God, you know. Okay, but we are still alive now. As in we're not into that other kind of life yet, but we're alive now and still in these mortal bodies, in this flesh. So to live is Christ. Okay, and uh, let's turn to Colossians chapter 3. We're going to read one single verse and that's verse 10. Colossians 3.10 says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. It says, again, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Since the verse begins with and, it means there's a lot that was said beforehand, right? And this is just a continuation of uh, an argument, of a discourse of something, right? Okay, so prior to that, we talk about a lot of things that we should not be doing. I know there are a lot who like to argue, like, there's liberty in Christ. Absolutely. But the idea of liberty in Christ doesn't mean I get to do whatever I want. Liberty in Christ means freedom in Christ from sin. Freedom from the guilt and shame of sin. Freedom to dwell at peace with our God. But when we dwell at peace with our God, we come back to that idea again of to live is Christ. Dwelling at peace with our God is because of what Christ has done on the cross for us. And our responsibility is to respond accordingly. When it says that we are putting on the new man, that new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Renewed in knowledge, which we must walk with an understanding. And that understanding in this chapter of scripture talks about the idea that, wait a minute, verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. If I am risen with Christ, if I have that newness of life, then my responsibility is to seek those things that are above. What are those things that are above? Verse 2. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Verse 3. For you are dead. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Whoa. That means when we say to live is Christ. My act, my life is hidden with Christ in God. I'm dead. And the life I live is that which Christ has for me. Which then means that I cannot do as I see fit and as I please. That is that knowledge we're talking about. To be renewed, putting on that new man, to be renewed in knowledge after the image. Which means, wait a minute, we're supposed to strive to be the image of Christ. As we talked about last week. Striving to be like Christ. Christ. Thus, to live is Christ. See, we can talk about, say that, okay, we're talking, we're speaking esoteric. We're talking about these lofty things that aren't simple, that aren't, that are hard to understand. Okay. But the thing is, we begin renewed in knowledge, which means there are things we have to understand in order to walk forward and live in that newness that Christ has called us to. So which means, one, we have to understand that we are dead. That our life is no longer our own when we came to Christ. That he purchased us and we are now his. To the glory of God the Father and for our own good. So that liberty and that peace I have is because of the purchase that Christ did. So, okay, 
simple. What are we supposed to do then? You know, we talk about liberty. So that means that, oh, I don't, it's not a lot about the do's or the do's in Christianity. Or it's not about don't do this, don't do that. No, that's there too. There are things we are not supposed to do. And there are things we are supposed to do. The things we are supposed to do are we are supposed to work and walk in the good works that God has called us unto before the foundation of time. That's why in Philippians 3, it talks about to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling because it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So which means there are things we are supposed to do, but truthfully, it also means there are things we are not supposed to do. Right? Because if we are to walk in the newness of the, the knowledge of Christ, or knowledge rather of the image of Christ, then there are certain things and lots and lots of things that Christ wouldn't do that we shouldn't be found as being part of as Christians. You know, so let's let's go there, right? We're gonna start from three again. It says for you're dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Five. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Mortify. Kill. Your members which are upon the earth. Fornication. Uncleanliness. Inordinate affection. Evil concupiscence. Concupiscence. Sorry. And the covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Wait. The wrath of God came on the children of disobedience because of this. And since I am now purchased by the blood of Christ, I am no longer a child of disobedience, but a child of God. Therefore, that wrath does not dwell upon me. Therefore, those things I should not be part of. Knowledge. Of the image of Christ. Seven, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. He's speaking in the past tense, which is we are not to continue to walk in that. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with. His deeds. There are do's and there are don'ts. The do's, we do those things that are pleasing unto God. In response. Not to earn. Because Christ has earned. Christ has purchased. Christ has paid it all. But in response. In appreciation. In understanding. In obedience. To walking in the knowledge of the newness of life we now have. Desiring to please our Heavenly Father, our loving Father. There are do's and there are don'ts. Because those don'ts are the things that we used to walk in. The things that Christ came and paid for. The things Christ died for. It does not mean that if we fall once or twice or three times that we are cast off. No, but it means we are to walk in that knowledge. We are to walk forward in that knowledge. I'm reminded of the of the hymn Onward Christian Soldier Marching as the War. That's what we do on a daily basis. We mortify our flesh and we continue to fight that spiritual battle. So again, verse 10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Verse 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, 
humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also do ye. And above all things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And we'll stop there. There are do's and there are don'ts. That's spiritual maturity. God bless you.